and fake. And we should be good. We're live. All righty. Let me get my video back on. All righty. We're good. Let's get this intro started and let's get it. One minute in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to I, thought you knew. I am your host, Tyrone Bridges. Let's get it. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, everybody. I am your host, Tyrone Bridges, and welcome to I Thought You Knew. I have a very special guest with us tonight, a candidate who is running for 14A2 District Court Judge for the city of Ypsilanti, Ms. Fawn Armstrong. Say hello, Fawn. Hello. Thank you so much, Mr. Bridges, for having me. All righty. Great. All right, let us know a little bit about you. Uh, I usually try to let our um, candidates go in and, and let the public know who you are and uh, why you run it. Of course. Uh, well, again, my name is Fawn Armstrong, running for 14A2 District Court uh, Judge. I've been a prosecutor here in Washtenaw County for the past 10 years. So I have uh, worked in all of the district courts. Uh, I spent the majority of my time at 14A2. I also did three years of appeals. I am currently assigned to circuit court work um, before Judge Brown. I'm also prior service. I did eight years in the Army Reserves. Uh, I did one deployment to Iraq from uh, August 05 to August 06 with the 785th Military Police Battalion. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, when I was in undergrad, I decided at that point uh, to choose the path of going into the law because I wanted to, uh, I wanted to be a prosecutor because I wanted to help victims. Um, I thought, gosh, I, if someone is a victim and they have someone to listen to them and fight for them and believe them, that would be a worthy occupation for the rest of my life. Uh, and then as I got into the prosecutor's office, uh, after I think about, I worked for a couple different firms doing a civil law for a while, I got into the prosecutor's office and again, spending most of my time in 14A2, and there's just, there's so much more uh, into, um, into criminal law than just fighting for victims' rights. Um, of course, you also have to think about the community, uh, the community's needs, the public interest, uh, but you also have to look at the defendant themselves. Uh, people come into the, the, before the court for, for a variety of reasons. They have their own history, their own trauma. Uh, they're all individuals and they need to be treated as individuals. Uh, and I've seen, I've seen real change happen at the district court level. Uh, like I said, I'm currently assigned to circuit court. So, um, those are the felonies. There are some serious, serious crimes there. And it's, it seems very, I don't want to say maybe cold or clinical uh, at, at the circuit court level. It's, are, are we pleading? Are we doing probation? Are we doing prison? Are we doing a jury trial? What, what's happening? Move along. Where at district court, there's a real opportunity for uh, the people involved, especially the judge, to really enact change. And they can do that through making individualized programming um, to get to the root or the cause of why someone is before the court in the first place. Uh, I, 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 I distinctly remember, this was at 14B with uh, Judge Pope. He had a domestic review docket and it was my, it was my favorite docket. And I really didn't have to do much as the prosecutor there. Uh, my job was to take notes and listen uh, because again, it's just, it's reviews. It's defendants coming in 
um, every month, every two months, just to talk about their programming, their jobs, their lives, what's happening. Uh, and some people would start off just kind of going through the motions. I'm forced to do this, yada, yada. Right. Uh, and over time, uh, some defendants were just excited to come in and talk to Judge Pope about this, these changes that are happening in my life. My my family life is better. My 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 job is better. Mm -hmm. I'm learning how to react to stressors in a positive way, uh, and 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 that changes every aspect uh, of their lives. Um, our whole goal, really, in the court is is to so that we don't see that person again, right? right. We we like to see you again, but we hope we don't see you again. Right. Um, they're coming there for the for the wrong reasons. Right. Um, right. We right. want someone to get to get better. Um, their their whole families um, lives to get better, um, and that's something that I've seen again because I've been here for so long in Washtenaw County, especially in Ipsy. Um, I've, I've I've seen the 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 cycles. Uh, of abuse um, and of, of violence and substance abuse that affects um, all of these these lives, uh, and if we can change that, then then man, what a what a worthy occupation, what a worthy cause if you can do that. Um, I I remember coming in. Gosh, this was probably one of my first years. And there was, um, sometimes we see some of the same names come up, especially in the, in the domestic violence realm. Wow. Um, and uh, it, it's hard, it's hard to change. It's hard to reach people, um, but we would see some of these same, same names coming up. And then at one point I saw the same last name, but a different first name mm -hmm. because it was now the 18, 19 year old son of that couple who's now committing or allegedly committing a domestic violence against his girlfriend, mm -hmm. right? Because that is something that, that that boy, that child grew up in, that, that environment of this is how you behave and this is how you react to stress. And, and, um, and gosh, if we could have just gotten to um, make a change in that family's live, lives before that, that child grew up, um, then, then maybe that that child wouldn't be in that predicament. Um, mm -hmm. So that's something that I, I I really feel strongly about. Uh, and I and I and I I've lived my life serving, um, you know, with with being a prosecutor, with being in the military, serving the people, serving the people specifically of my community. Uh, and and I and I. I think I can serve best now with, with the experiences that I have, with um, the vision that I have. I think I can serve best uh, as, as a district, district court judge All because right. that's so, where the so, change is. So, so in your community, let's, let's, let's delve into your community. So where are you originally from, if you don't mind me asking? Yes, I, um, I, I mostly say I grew up in Marine City. Uh, we moved around a little bit when I was younger, so places like St. Clair Shores, uh, East Point, um, but in sixth grade, I, I moved to Marine City, so I spent the majority of my life there. Okay, and uh, what type of programs are you involved in in Ypsilanti, uh, in the city of Ypsilanti, uh, uh, connecting with the people in Ypsilanti, if you don't mind me asking? Um, you, you know, I certain types of programs, it's, it's mostly just... Um, just through the the work I do at court, mm -hmm. um, I I've been, been involved in various um, charity programming uh, for the for um, for the community. A lot of that has to do with um, um, putting on different events. Uh, there, I'm, I'm in an all lawyer band, and mm -hmm. uh, we would perform at various events to raise money for charity. That be it. Humane Society, um, Food Gatherers, uh, Toys for Tots. Um, I've been involved in programs um, around Christmas time where, uh, the, I, and now I'm blanking on the name of it, but it's a program specifically for Washtenaw County residents where uh, people of, of uh, that perhaps can't afford to throw the best 
Christmas for their for their family members. Um, uh, they they are selected to um, um, to be in the program, and then they have a wish list, and we give um, and donate various items that the family needs that the children need. Uh, that's been um, I think a very worthy uh, program uh, for for people here. Uh, so I think uh, that's that's mostly it. Just various yeah. charity. Yeah, I understand. It's mm -hmm. a lot of uh, a lot of people running for office that are involved in a lot of programs. So a lot of programs specifically for uh, Washtenaw County residents via low income residents and et cetera. Uh, the reason why I ask that, because a lot of uh, your constituents or a lot of the consumers or people that comes through your court, if you are elected, will be uh, within the Ypsilanti area. And that's why I'm wondering what type of connection do you have or have you had any connection um, to any uh, groups or any, uh, um, any functions within the city of Ypsilanti? Um, that's a very, uh, very uh, uh, key thing that a lot of people look forward to in supporting someone's campaign when they're running uh, within the city. Um, just, you know, within your campaigning out there, uh, make sure you connect with uh, a lot of these uh, groups. Uh, you have Park Ridge, you have uh, a lot of different community uh, or organizations. We have Growing Hope. Uh, you have different areas, different groups in the area that you could probably definitely get some uh, feedback from, some information to help boost your campaign, as well as um, uh, meet people within the area. Um, that would yes. be something to look forward to. Uh, Thank you. So definitely. Uh, so just in, 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 a, in, a, in a realm of, of working with families, um, you know, um, I always ask people, I'm pretty sure you're, you're a parent as well. Um, yes. and you, you, uh, hold your children dear to your heart. Uh, a lot of things in Ypsilanti that's happening, um, it would require or need a, uh, parent's, uh, uh, perspective, uh, as well as your legal perspective in the, uh, on the bench. So uh, share with us some things, uh, if you don't mind, that um, let, the, let the public know a little bit more personal stuff about you and who you are, because we want to know uh, who this person, I mean, your looks can get you in on some people, but a lot of people will be wondering where this pretty face come from. We want to know is, does she have a husband? Does she have kids? I mean, I mean can she understand the people who she's serving? So I, I, you know, that's the question that I'd like to ask. Absolutely. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about me um, currently right now. I, I do have a, a daughter mm -hmm. um, named Ava Grace. She is 13 years old in seventh grade. She goes okay. to Celine Middle School. All right. I uh, just got married in March. Uh, my husband is a criminal defense attorney. His really? name is uh, Christopher Shemke. All righty. All righty. <laughs> Give him a shout out again. Say that name again. Let Christopher it... Shemke. Okay. All right. All right, Christopher, you hear she's giving you a shout out. So make sure you come back on the show at some point and uh, be your wife's cheerleader. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, and he's actually, um, so he's newer to the community. It's one of those things that uh, we've been kind of dating on and off of. Mm -hmm about five or six years. Uh, and he was he was more of a Wayne County, um, he was a prosecutor in Wayne County um, for a little bit. And I think the last 10 to 12 years, he's been a criminal defense attorney uh, doing Oakland, Wayne. Uh, and uh, I said, I, I gotta stay in, I gotta stay in Washtenaw. I, I gotta stay here in, this is my home, this is my community. Uh, so I finally was able to convince him to move out here. I also told him he needs to get on the um, public defender list, uh, the appointed attorney list in Washtenaw County, because okay. I know that our residents here um, who can't afford to retain need to have good representation. So we need to have that list very strong. Um, so he, he is doing that and, and uh, he, he really enjoys uh, the work that he does here. Um, uh, I, I wanna give a little bit, if you don't mind, about kind of my history and, and growing up because I do want the, it's a lot to ask someone to, to vote for me 
and you don't know me. And I think my history leads a lot to how I would be a judge and even how I'm how I uh, approach being a prosecutor, um, because like I said, when I look at everyone as an individual, it's because I know that everyone like myself has their own history, has their own trauma. And that trauma, those experiences, perhaps um, shape their behaviors or actions, or even what they can do if they're on probation. Uh, that affects my decisions that I would have to make if someone's perhaps violating probation. Mm -hmm. um, all of that is, is I think, very relevant. Um, I myself grew up very um, uh, of low means. Uh, my mom was a, a single mother. Uh, she, was, she was also a foster child for a period of time. Um, uh, she, so she was kind of told at 18, you're, you're on your own. So she got married right away, had, had uh, three to four kids right away. And uh, it was a struggle, it was a struggle. She worked at Kroger. Um, we were on free lunch. We were, we were going to lose our house. Uh, it, was, it, it, was, uh, it, was, it was a struggle um, for, for a long period of time. Um, she also, I've seen her be a victim herself of domestic violence mm -hmm. um, by my ex-stepfather. I remember being a child trying to shield my younger siblings um, while I saw her being thrown against walls, uh, holding my baby sister. Mm -hmm. um, so that also leads into my experience and knowing what, what people are, are going through themselves. Um, so through all of that, my, my dad himself um, had a lot of substance abuse issues. Mm -hmm. um, he was uh, actually in a biker gang uh, while I was growing up. Uh, he did get out uh, at some point, um, but he was in and out of jail. Um, he, our family friends were going to prison. Um, so, so all of that shaped me and, and my behaviors mm -hmm. and, and, and my, myself, I, I ended up getting in trouble uh, when I was a teenager. I, I had a, an arrest for shoplifting uh, and I, I remember being terrified. Uh, I didn't understand the court system. I didn't know what was going to happen to me. I remember being in court with my public defender and uh, they said, oh good, we're going to get you this, this deferral. Uh, it'll keep it off your record. You're just gonna do some probation. And I was ecstatic. I, I couldn't believe my luck. Um, and, I, and I went into that court in front of the judge just smiling ear to ear because I, 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 I was just so, so happy. Uh, and I remember the, the judge didn't, didn't like it that I was so happy um, and ended up tacking on a, a bunch more conditions and uh, community service. Uh, uh, so I had to complete all of that based on, I didn't know how to behave, I guess, in court and I wasn't supposed to smile. Um, but it was one of those things that always, it was always in the back of my mind um, when I was uh, doing prosecution work, especially in district court and having um, young, and I say kids, but, you know, kids, young, you know, teenagers, they're adults coming into district court, but mm -hmm. legally adults, but 18, 19, up to, you know, young 20s are all the kids. Uh, they would, you know, come in and, and it, the people that are coming into the court, that could be the worst day of their lives. Mm -hmm. And that needs to be acknowledged. And those kids coming into court, they need to have things explained to them they, because they don't know. And this is terrifying for them. And we need to be able to look at them and say, let's, let's give you a second chance. And that's what I hope to have is, is essentially a court of second chances. Uh, because no one deserves to have their lives completely ruined forever um, by mistakes and mistakes made basically based upon their environment and their wow. childhood and, wow. and their lack of, of appropriate mentors or um, education or means. Uh, all of that needs to be taken into consideration. Right. Um, uh, also, I guess, as a uh, 
as an adult, when I became a, a lawyer, um, I was a single mother of a three-year-old. Uh, and my first job as a lawyer, I was making $35,000 a year. So I was with no benefits. Mm -hmm. I was also waitressing at night. Um, and still, as a lawyer, I, I didn't... <laughs> didn't realize because in my head, I'm thinking, oh, you're a lawyer now. No, nope. uh, still just paycheck to paycheck. Um, you know, one, one um, car issue away from complete disaster, mm -hmm. uh, putting everything on credit cards, uh, you know, feeling the, the, the terrible mom guilt of uh, I can't afford the fancy programs or I have the cheapest daycare in someone's garage, mm -hmm. um, but I need to, I need to work. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is what I can do. And that all comes into play again in decisions I have to make as a prosecutor and potentially as a judge, because yes, we're putting someone on probation. We're not putting them in jail, but those probation conditions can be overwhelming. Um, especially when you are just trying to survive and we're also asking someone to pay court fines um, and fees um, and, and monthly probation fees and, right. and fees for programming. And it's just, it, it, it can be, it seems sometimes insurmountable. Mm -hmm. And that's something, like I said earlier, that comes into play when you're saying uh, this person came in and they're being violated because they didn't do X, Y, and Z on their probation. Oh, so do we just put them in jail or do we look at their situation and say, maybe they're doing the best they can right now? Right, right, I understand. <laughs> so definitely we, we, we appreciate all that information, but what would you bring as a newly elected judge? Uh, what programs or what type of uh, things that you would bring? Uh, to the court system? Mm -hmm. uh, well, definitely, of course, uh, the balance that I've spoken about before uh, in the individualized programming, because again, we want to get to the root um, and, and the cause of someone's issues uh, mm -hmm. so that they don't have to come into court again. Um, something that I uh, feel very passionate about is um, or at least in my experience, uh, being at 14A2 for so long is is traffic offenses, driver's licenses. Um, that is, we want people to be able to drive. Right. Yet sometimes we make it impossible for them to be able to drive or have valid licenses. Uh, and that's something that definitely needs to be fixed. We need to have more um, assistance showing people how to get their license back. Um, and and be more forgiving on, on fees and things that people uh, can't can't afford, uh, but they need to be able to drive. Uh, one thing right. I have seen, I think is, is because of the pandemic, uh, you know, we switched a lot to, to Zoom court mm -hmm. uh, and, and things have lessened up now. And I've seen judges uh, in the community start going back in person for a lot of things. But I will tell you the 1482 uh, court dockets are very long, very long. You might have someone there who is unrepresented. So of course, different uh, retained attorneys get to go first and mm -hmm. someone sitting there all day just for perhaps an adjournment. And they have wasted now an entire day of not getting paid because they're not able to go to work. Uh, and, and also we're expecting them to get to court where maybe they don't have a license and we're saying just, figure it out. Uh, I think that Zoom court, especially for pre-trial dockets, uh, should be uh, something that is a regular uh, occurrence. I'm hoping I'm judged to keep that going uh, because, I, and, and, I, and I've seen this happen, someone can be at work, they're logged into the Zoom, they've got it muted, and then when their case is called, they can ask their boss and say, hey, I, I, need, a, I need to take a break. They can go in the hall or, or wherever, do their case really quick, five minutes, go back to work. So it's, I think it's less disruptive in people's lives, right? Uh, especially for, for just something as simple as a pretrial where other times they're there all, all day. Um, one thing I also, I'm hoping to start doing 
Um, I recall Ariane Slay starting something called a warrant resolution day. And she did that at 15th District Court. And it was, a, I think it was a huge success. I, I remember attending it. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of uh, cooperation between uh, the different prosecutors, the public defender's office, but, uh, and the probation agents. But having, having, someone, having a program, because a lot of people um, that maybe have a warrant, they maybe they have multiple warrants, a lot of it's traffic. It's all traffic related. Mm -hmm. uh, someone that can just, or a day where someone can just come in and say, this is what I have. How, how, how what can I do here? And then everyone can get together and, and very quickly just figure out what someone's issues are, figure out resolutions and handle it. So we can get those warrants um, off, off of lean and off of, of, of on someone's mind. Uh, because the last thing someone needs is to get pulled over because their headlights out and they didn't pay a ticket. So they have a warrant out for their arrest. And guess what? Now they're spending the night in jail. Right. Now it's, it's completely counterproductive to us wanting them to pay their tickets or get their licenses. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense when they're sitting in jail um, for, for tickets. Um, so that's, that's definitely something, um, um, I, another thing I was thinking of is, uh, a lot of times, especially with the, with, uh, the youth, with younger kids who come in with their cases, um, a lot of the pro probation terms seem very, they're not individualized. It's just, everyone is going to do the same thing. I think there needs to be some more approach to community service in lieu of fines, Right. Because I don't know if anyone's actually like learning anything when they're just forced to pay money that they don't have. But if we can find specific community service programs uh, that also gives that person perhaps a mentor, uh, I think that might change uh, people's lives for the better in terms instead of just money. Like I said, like if we can have them. Um, uh, uh, do probate, do pro, sorry, do community service with those um, programs that you discussed, the Growing Hope, the Park Ridge. Uh, I also looked something else up that was a Supreme Felons, um, having someone do a community service, do a good thing, but also be mentored by someone um, who's been through it or can lead them in the right direction. That would, I think, change um, change people's lives for the better. So what is the Supreme Felons Program? So that's what I've been researching. I just heard about it. Um, and it's in, it's an Ypsilanti program. And I think it seems to be a, a community service program, but also mentorship. I've seen them do things um, contributing to um, uh, like raising um, money for um, meals, uh, like Thanksgiving turkeys, um, but it's also put on, I believe, by people who have been through the system and can give mentorship to the youth of, of our community. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, is there any type of endorsements that you would like to share that you've already received, uh, if you can share them? Um, I, I have several um, endorsements, um, mostly from um, a lot of judges I've met uh, throughout the years. Um, I have a judge, a lot of them are out, out county. I do have a Judge Julia outside from the Washtenaw County um, Probate Court. Um, Judge uh, Mimi Mullins, Elizabeth Mullins, Elizabeth DeSanto, um, uh, Judge uh, Coleman Hessen, uh, Judge, um, trying to remember everyone's names, uh, Judge Allen, he's in uh, Wayne County, um, the circuit court there, uh, Judge Ed Ewell. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's see here, gosh, uh, oh, I, I, Judge uh, Greg Clifton and uh, Judge Gino Salamone. Uh, I actually just went to an event with those two, uh, with most of those individuals um, uh, this earlier this week. And it was a, it was a program about um, uh, and fighting uh, and, and um, people who are substance abuse issues, um, people against nar narcotics use and, and programming. Um, all of those 
judges at that program. That was Mullins, DeSanto, um, Shackelford, Cliff, um, Clifford, um, or Clifton. Uh, they all have um, specialty courts. And that's something that has been, uh, I guess, a vision or dream of mine for 14A is putting on a, I, I would prefer a, a sobriety court in 14A. Um, so, so 14A serves uh, all of Washtenaw County with the exception of Ann Arbor City, which has 15th district court and 14B, which is Ypsilanti Township. Okay. So 14A is four different district courts, but it serves the rest, all of the rest of Washtenaw County. And it's the only district court, it's actually the only court, because the circuit court also has one, uh, only court in the county that does not have one of these specialty courts. Uh, and, and I think it's so important. Uh, and of course, uh, someone who came into 14A2 perhaps, uh, and they should be referred to a specialty court or sobriety court, um, they can be referred to, to 15th or, or, or a different drug court. But a lot of times, uh, sometimes they're full. Um, sometimes there's a waiting list. Um, perhaps someone at 15th might get priority over mm -hmm. someone who's been getting referred from 14A. And I definitely think that is lacking. And that's something that I would intend to do is start a sobriety court in 14A. Uh, it's, it's you, you have to get the funding, you have to get grants, you have to get uh, the, the people who would be running the program. You have to make room in your docket, but it is so worthwhile because you can really reach someone uh, because a lot of times this regular probation isn't enough, especially with substance abuse. Mm -hmm. You really need someone to be um, closely supervised, but also it gives someone motivation to, to finish the program and to succeed because the benefits of it are a dismissal of the charges mm -hmm. or a reduction of the charges. And that's huge. That's huge. You've put in all this work and you've gotten better and now you're sober and, and you can start fresh uh, and, and get your license back quicker. It's, it's a huge motivation. And yes, it's work, but that is what it's going to take to stop some of the substance abuse. And, and that's something that's affecting our community. We see a lot of cases of um, fentanyl and fentanyl is very scary very, very dangerous. Uh, and a lot of people don't even know what they have because they think that they have heroin, but it's actually, once it's tested, it's fentanyl. And that's what's causing overdoses because people are doing too much of it, thinking it's heroin, but it's not. And, and now um, they're in the hospital um, or they're um, overdosing and perhaps passing away, it's, it's terrifying. So I definitely think that's something that is lacking at the 14A court. Um, so when I spoke to uh, Judge Salamone, who just retired, but he's, he started that um, court's uh, sobriety court. And um, I think Shackelford is taking it over, but also um, 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 the, the other judges there, they were very supportive and said, hey, we will we will advise you, we will help you start the sobriety court at 14A because they believe in it, I believe in it, uh, and it's, it's, it's necessary at so this point. So are these judges outside the network of Washtenaw County judges? Right, yes. So just judges I've met um, through, through legal events, through, through my husband. Um, so I've gotten to know them uh, on a, just a personal level uh, and they've uh, advised me in, in running for judge. Um, I've had a lot of conversations with them uh, about the work um, and about, like I said, these types of programs. So they've been they've been very, very, uh, very helpful and very supportive. But do you have any home endorsements of any Washtenaw County judges currently at all? Yes. Yes. So I said Judge um, uh, Julia outside. Julia is, outside what court she's in. She's at the circuit court in Washtenaw. Okay. So she does. Probate work. Probate. I also have referee Altenberg. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, those names, I don't recognize those names. I know a lot of the main, the main judges, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, I just wanted to make sure you uh, echo their names out so you can give them a shout out and let them know that uh, you recognize yeah. their support. And um, 
anything that you would like to share to the public about your campaign, how to get a hold to you, how to support oh, yeah. your campaign, maybe how to donate or even how to get a sign or, or <laughs> you know, get a pen or a pencil and help you out. Yes, thank you. Um, so I, we're, we're still, uh, we were hoping the website would go live uh, this weekend, and I think we ran into some glitches, um, but uh, we will have the Facebook page. I think it's up, but it's uh, Fawn Armstrong for Judge. I'm also Fawn Armstrong for Judge at gmail.com, or you can email me personally if you just want to talk to me or raise concerns. Uh, it's Fawn Cecilia at gmail.com. Uh, Cecilia, C E C I L I A. Fawn is F A W N. Uh, uh, so all of that uh, is, is hopefully going to be coming out soon. This was a, uh, uh, we're kind of scrambling a little bit. We didn't know that Judge Tabby was going to retire early. Mm -hmm. uh, so as soon as we found that out, um, I had to talk to my husband because it's a family decision, talk to my daughter and right. say, hey, um, this is something that we've want, that they knew that I've wanted to do for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought we weren't going to do it for another six years, but it was always the, the intention um, for our family or for, for me. Uh, and are, are we gonna do this now? And, and they've been very supportive, helping me go door to door, talking to people. Um, so we are, we are, we're putting it all together now. <laughs> excellent, but it, excellent. The website will come out. Um, the other last thing I know that I, we're gonna have time, um, what something else is that's very important to me too is um, I'm very concerned about um, uh, of weapons and guns in the community. Um, so we've seen so many of these um, CCW cases or in gun violence, um, and I've been very aware of it. Um, even a couple of weeks ago, I was at court, um, and I think I just asked you know, and more rhetorically uh, to some of the officers, I just said, "How how how are these people getting all these guns? I don't even know where these." guns come from like they're all unregistered and and the cop said that gosh a lot of people just they all put guns in their cars mm -hmm. because everyone's mm -hmm. afraid and they need them for protection so everyone leaves everyone knows that people have guns in their cars so because people know that other people come in and then start breaking into cars mm -hmm. to see these guns because everyone is looking for I guess a way to protect themselves or 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 perhaps nefarious purposes but but that's something that needs to be addressed in the community if our if our residents are just so terrified that they're all gonna keep guns in their cars I mean that's something that needs to needs to be changed we shouldn't have our residents scared just to drive somewhere or live right um, and I'm definitely but, sure with good judges on the bench uh, that problem can be solved. Uh, yeah. um, it takes a village to raise a community. Um, mm -hmm. I said that with a twist because uh, we know it takes a village to raise a child, but it takes a village to raise a community properly. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody has this team thing, um, who's on whose team, and who's on this team. Um, but what we need, we need some level-headed judges on the bench uh, mm -hmm. We need some family judges on the bench, judges that understands the, uh, the, the meaning of family um, and also understands the uh, mental well-being of uh, a lot of the, the uh, clients that they're going to serve. Uh, a lot of the clients do suffer from uh, a lot of mental illness uh, and also substance abuse. And you're going to run into a lot of youth doing a lot of crime and um, the uh, community is going to lean on your wisdom and your knowledge of the law and also your knowledge as a parent to seek out uh, uh, solutions to solve some of these problems in the community. So that's why we bring people like you on the show. We would like to dig into your head and find out where you're going uh, because, you know, we have no idea. A lot of people with their names, uh, a lot of people run off recognition uh, because they're popular. Uh, we're glad we got women judges that's running for office and also male judges, African American judges as well that's running for office. And, mm -hmm. you know, black women that's running for office as well. We, we need all people to come together in our community and also 
understand that we want our community to be safe and um, we want your kids protected too because we'll be out there kicking butt out there in the community and letting people know, hey, we don't want her kid bothered as well. So uh, we want uh, someone on the bench who have that same uh, that same vibe for us. You know, our kids need to prote be protected. Our grandkids need to be protected. And uh, mm -hmm. of course, judges ain't all about sending people to jail. Uh, judges all about being a solution to problems and many problems, I should say. Um, a lot of times I watch uh, court roles and I see judges being uh, literally a part of the family when they make these decisions, like Judge Honorable Judge Simpson. Uh, Judge Tabby, he's very good as well. Um, he, he understands what he's facing in the community and the type of people that he has. So it's gonna take someone with uh, some, you know, some understanding to fill his, 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 uh, his shoes mm -hmm. and uh, bring a, a better perspective on the bench. Um, I'm not saying that his wasn't good, but uh, a new perspective, I should say. I stand corrected. I agree. All righty. So if there's anything else uh, that you would like to tell the public real quick, uh, it's not like we're pressed for time. This is my show. I just would like you to uh, share it with them. Um, you know, let them know. Let them know where you're going to be at next, uh, where to get some information, where to get some literature. Um, I know your website ain't up, but that don't stop nothing. Uh, people still want to vote and they want to know who you are. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, I, I, I guess I just really want people to know that I know that judges need to be accountable to the community and accountable to the people. Mm -hmm. So I always, this is not just my, my vision. This needs to be a community vision. On, on, and I need that input from people. Mm -hmm. Um, people that that live here uh, I've lived here but everyone has their own perspective and if you, there's something that uh, you see and, and you think uh, needs to be changed then I I am all ears uh, and, and it will be continuous throughout um, if I am elected uh, this isn't uh, just I take the bench and, and then for, forget everything else uh, it's got to be evolving constantly mm -hmm. uh, there's new struggles that will pop up um, uh, all constantly. And that's something that we need to be able to adapt to. Um, and, and I, I always want to be open, uh, to that. Uh, I hope that I can, if anyone is looking to, uh, get advice about going to law school, I, uh, I, when I went to college, it was my mom's dream that all of her kids went to college, uh, because no one else had in our family. So I was the very first to never go to college and I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. And, and then when my mom said, maybe you should be a lawyer. And that was, it was, I couldn't fathom it because I had never met a lawyer. I had never met anyone that went beyond uh, or even went to college. And I thought that's, that's something that, you know, other people do or, or well-to-do people become lawyers. Um, it's, it takes a lot to um, just to start off on that with, without knowing anything uh and so i i you know i hope that's one of my my dreams really as a judge is being able to give someone um to believe in them and say that you can do this too um and and see it happen and for them to come back and and say i graduated and gosh i would love to, to swear them in at some point have them intern for me i i i hope to be able to give that that motivation um, to other people, believe in them. Um, because again, I, with what I experienced as a, as a child um, with the, you know, different abuses um, and, and lack of real uh, opportunity, uh, it affects you as a person, it affects your, your self-confidence mm -hmm. and what you think you can do. Uh, it really, I think, took me going to, uh, when I went through basic training for the military, um, seeing what I was able to accomplish, mostly because I was so, so afraid of the drill sergeants, but being able to put it, putting yourself in those types of stressful circumstances and situations and being strong through it and fighting through it. And you just, 
gosh, you realize that you have the power within you this whole time. Um, it's amazing what you can accomplish and you have that intestinal fortitude in you, you do have it. Um, so I, I, I hope that I can perhaps bring some of that um, hope to the community. Fantastic. And, and if I didn't say earlier, I wanna tell you thank you for your service uh, oh. as well um, in, in the military, uh, as well as, uh, you know, you're doing your thing over there and trying to uh, run and get elected uh, for the judge's seat. Uh, we thank you for coming on the show and we definitely want to get you back once when you have your website up and your information up. I know uh, campaigning is hard and definitely just in case the people want to know how to contact you, how is there a telephone number that they may be able to contact you and say, hey, I want to volunteer for your campaign. I want to help get your information out. Is there a number that they can contact you at? Absolutely. And I'll say it twice. Okay. You want to write it down, but it's 810-278-4000. Uh, uh -huh. It's 810-278-1510. And that is my personal cell. So you can reach me. You can talk to me uh, about anything. Uh, and, and I will listen. All right, y'all understand y'all reach, reach her, give her a call. If y'all want to help her campaign, this is Miss Fawn Armstrong and she's running for 14A2 District Court for the city of Ypsilanti. You guys, thank you very much for coming on the show and tell your husband once again, you got a hell of a cheerleader uh, from a male's perspective because he <laughs> called and said, hey, I got, we got to get her on the show. And uh, what can we do? I honor that brother. I appreciate him and tell him thank you for being a, a solid husband. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bridges. I really appreciate it. No problem. And uh, <laughs> when you do get elected, if you do get elected, make sure you promise to come back on the show so we can do a follow up with you as well. Oh, I promise to come back on your show. Thank okay. you. All right. <laughs> Hope to see you soon uh, down the line further in your campaign so we can get you back on the show, you and your husband, with some more information. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. You have a wonderful night, and thank you for coming on our show. Peace. Thank you.